All right, we're in. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, as you're coming into the room, please introduce yourselves in the chat. Tell us, you know, your name, where you're from. If you are teaching, you know, what are you teaching? This is about business businesses and side hustles. So if you're thinking about like I, I'm thinking about a side hustle, or I want to start a business, or I'm looking for that career change, maybe let us know that too, so we can kind of get a measure of who's in our group and what we are going to be talking about tonight. Um, you know, this is Erica Terry. She is going to be my amazing co-host tonight. She is the <laughs> host of the Classroom to CEO podcast and is like the wealth of experience when it comes to this overlap between teachers <laughs> and business owners. So she is the perfect person to have on tonight to talk about side hustles and businesses. I have a couple myself, but I think, you know, <laughs> I'm going to sit here in the shadows while you steal the limelight on this one. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. Um, such kind words. And I'm so excited to be here, Melissa and Crystal. I agree. It is definitely a happy Friday. And I couldn't be happier than to be spending it with you all. So there are no questions off limits. Whatever topics you want to talk about, just throw them in the chat. We're watching and we will discuss it. Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to throw some questions in ahead of time that you'd like to get answered tonight, do so. You can mark them as a question. There's a little bubble next to the chat where you can say mark as questions. So if you do that, it makes it easier for us to find them and identify them as questions. But yeah, we will definitely scan through and try and get as many of your questions answered tonight as we can. So yeah, we got a wide range of people here. I see California, um, yes. Richmond, Virginia, home New of Choose FI. Central Pennsylvania, New York. Yes. Wisconsin. I'm really hoping we are, I think we got asked to present at the Economics Wisconsin um, like teacher presentation summit thing. So I'm hoping that we get to talk about personal finance to you guys out there. That'll be really exciting. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, we got to do one with Arkansas and that was really fun. So, you know, all Economics Arkansas was putting on like just a series of professional developments for teachers about personal finance and how you can teach in your classroom. And there was a huge amount of uptake on it. It was really fun to. Wow. Yes. And, yes. I got to, and I got to talk about entrepreneurship. So I, <laughs> I was like, yes, this is so fun. Our favorite topic, Florida, Mexico City. All right. Uh, and Crystal, I see that first question. Do we know about drop shipping? All right, we got to put a peg on that one. We're going to talk about drop shipping. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna learn about drop shipping. <laughs> oh, I can talk a little bit about drop shipping. All right, so I got that oh, one. Great, yes, you got that one. <laughs> All right, it is 7 to 4. We're gonna give one more minute before we kind of launch into our like focus for tonight. So, again, if you've got questions, put those in the chat. If you are just joining us, please introduce yourself in the chat. Tell us maybe where you're from. And you know, are you currently a teacher? Are you looking to start a business, a side hustle? Are you looking to make a career change? Are you retired? Have you left teaching already? And you're just like, all right, what's the next thing for me? You know, give us give us a, an idea of what's going on in your life. And Janine wants to know the name of that conference you're speaking at in Wisconsin so she can join you. Oh, goodness. Um, so the Economic Association, so there's a national branch, and then each state has its own branch. I believe it is called Economics Wisconsin, but don't quote me on that because they all have their own weird way of saying it. Um, like Maryland is like the Maryland Council of Economic Education. Arkansas was Economics Arkansas. Like they all have their own name. If you go to the National Economic Association, you will find all the state branches and they have a summit coming up in October. And I believe it's like October 5th, if I, my memory is right, is when that actual summit's going to be. All right, Crystal wants to start a side hustle. Yes. And Val has brought up my favorite topic, passive income sources. So yes. we definitely have to talk about that tonight. Sundell started a side business. Okay, looking for more ideas. Would love to hear about that business. What is it? What are you doing? And you know, are you looking to grow that business? Are you looking to switch into something else? Tell us about it for sure. Okay, yeah. it is 7.05. We are going to be here for an hour tonight. So let's kick this off. This is Erica Terry. She's going to be my co-host tonight. She is the host of the Classroom to CEO podcast as well as a wealth of knowledge on pretty much anything that comes with being an educator and being a business owner. So Eric, would you mind just telling us a little bit about yourself? Um, you know, What's your background? How did you get to where you are today? And what, what is today? What does it look like for you? Oh, yes. So I am actually, I cannot believe every time I say this, I'm like, oh my gosh, but I am in my 18th year as an educator. 
I started off as a high school biology teacher and kind of worked my way up that ladder like so many of us educators do, uh, going back to school, taking out more student loans. I did that whole thing. Um, I went from high school biology teacher to and then I went into administration, director, uh, chief academic officer, and then I was blessed after 10 years of struggling with fertility issues. My husband and I uh, had our daughter and everything changed for me. I didn't want to be stuck to my phone 60 and 70 hours a week. Um, I just, I didn't want that life for her. So I gave up the administration thing and went into consulting, which is what I do today. So um, post pandemic, I mean, pre pandemic, my days were spent like in schools, doing trainings, teaching, um, coaching with co-teachers. That's the main topic that I talk about and train about. Um, now it's the same thing, but it's in a virtual environment, just like all of you have had, or many of you, have had to shift to teaching online. I have had to shift to doing professional learning and coaching online. So it is brand new for everyone. And we're gonna get into that tonight. It makes a perfect time to start a business. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it really is. We're gonna come back to that in a second, like why it is the perfect time. I wanna tell you a little bit about myself as well. I'm a high school math and personal finance teacher. I'm still in the, you know, the trenches of the classroom at the moment. Um, Fortunately, we are virtual, 100% virtual this fall, and we called it all the way up till January. So I'm going to be virtual until January, which, oh, wow. you know, personally very um, thankful for and very grateful for. Even though I know it's going to be an extra challenge to try and transition to a virtual environment, and everybody is trying to transition their teaching in some way, so it's going to be it's going to be a new challenge no matter what. But um, personal finance is something I started teaching about I think it's four years ago now. And I knew nothing about it before I started. And when I got asked to teach, I was like, sure. And then in my head, I was like, I need to go learn this stuff quick. So I spent an entire summer you know, diving through things like Dave Ramsey and then starting to listen to more podcasts. Um, Choose a Fi is a podcast that I also work part-time for as a curriculum writer. And they, they were amazing. They showed me this idea of financial independence and how you can get to a point in your life where money just no longer becomes a worry for you. And it's not the point you think it's not like, oh, you have $20 million or you've got this like huge corporation that's just constantly throwing money at you. It's a much more achievable number. And the idea is that when you hit this point, you can just stop working or you can continue to work if you want to. You can do whatever you want because there's enough in your retirement accounts, your investments, your passive income, any businesses that you got rolling in that you can sustain yourself for the rest of your life. So that was like a huge idea for me. And I was like, yes, I want to grab onto that. And there's kind of three major pillars that we talk about in this um, personal finance community. You have to increase your income, you have to decrease your expenses. And then with that gap you create, you have to invest it better. And that investing is what's going to get you to this financial independence point. And for me, the increase in your income was the one that was like, ooh, I like the sound of that. Like th th that one lit me up a little bit, like decre decreasing expenses. Like, yes, there's a challenge to it. I do like a challenge. I'm very competitive, but it gets to a point where you're like, there's, there's not much more I can cut out without my life starting to feel a little bit dull or restricted, which I didn't want. Mm -hmm. So increasing income was the way to go. And then I just started asking, well, how do you do that? And entrepreneurship or starting your own extra sources of income is something that just, I love the thought of because you are in control and now we kind of come into like why this is a great time to start a business. How many of you know somebody who has lost a job been furloughed, had hours cut, had their salary just lowered, um, bonus taken away, whatever, as a result of this COVID situation where they had an employer who you know, was their source of income. They thought they were in control. They thought it was comfortable and it's suddenly gone. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, like my school district just told 500 cafeteria and school bus drivers that their job is no longer there for them because we're virtual for six months. And you, you, even like working in the education sector, like you think that's a pretty secure job. Most of us feel very comfortable that we're not gonna get fired tomorrow, but it's still not 100% secure. And having different sources of income that if one job disappears, there's others to pick up the slack mm -hmm. is something that really resonated with me. I, I consider myself like a risk averse person in general and that's my that's my insurance policies like set up as many different sources of money coming in so if one disappears 
you take a hit, but there's still something coming in. Right. And I would say even for me, my job, we didn't lose jobs, but we lost days, which mm-hmm. equates to money. So, you know, some people were really panicking about it. And I'm just like, oh, well, I have my online business that can sustain, you know, that. And so. I mean, you're absolutely right that when you are creating these multiple streams of income, that when life happens, no one expected this. It's like you have that safety measure because you know that on the other side, you can bring in additional income, increase income, decrease expenses, invest the gap. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's a three-legged stool, super, super simple. Um, and if you know the personal finance side of things is something you guys are really interested in, I do highly recommend checking out Chooseify's podcast, blog, our Facebook groups, you know, wherever you know you want to learn, we can help show you how to do better with your money. And our, my co-host from the last couple of months, Stephen, uh, we went through a six webinar series where we talked about how to do better with your money for teachers. So it's teacher specific. And I will post links to that in the Facebook event. And I'll also tag it onto the email that comes out after this if you're interested in learning more about that. All right. So yes. why is it, you know, we talked about that we want more sources of income, but why is this the right time to start a business? Like it's always a good time, but why is this particularly a good time to start a business or a side hustle? Cause I know for me, and I think for you too, just hearing your story, I became successful when in business, when I began to really focus on empowering others to achieve success in their life. And so for me, classroom, the CEO was my way of helping educators turn that knowledge and start a business for you. You're helping them grow their finances, teaching them how to invest. And so it's this problem that you have. And when you build your business around helping others to solve those problems, then it it equates to you being successful. And right now, every educator out there is dealing with, I like to call it teacher problems, but they're dealing and struggling with some area and you are as well. And so one way to easily start a business is just find one issue that you're figuring out. And I mean, you can literally be sharing with them the day after you figure it out, you could be sharing um, your new knowledge that you are gaining and just like empowering others to achieve success. And that's how you build a community. And once you get that community, I'm sure you can attest, Rob, that as, um, as you empower more and more, then you will begin to see your income steadily increase from month to month. Yeah, I think the key that you said is um, a business or a side hustle has to solve a problem and mm-hmm. it can solve your own problem because chances are somebody else has that problem too. But the the big thing that COVID has done for the entire world is it's turned it upside down and it's created a whole new range of needs and wants mm-hmm. and problems. Mm-hmm. And every business is having to adapt to those right now. And what it means is that pretty much every market that was very much like, okay, this belongs to this company, or they've really, you know, they've, they've got it. Everyone's buying from them. It's all up for grabs again, because now the game has changed. The rules have changed. Mm -hmm. And there's a huge space here for people to start new businesses, start side hustles that fix those problems. Cause there's just Mm -hmm. so many of them out there right now. You just take your pick of problems and go solve it and you will have a business. Yes. And I can give you a perfect example. Um, I just had Dr. Angela Draper on the podcast this week and she started a business. She's a principal. She started a business around March or April about being a virtual principal and now is literally showing people how she's setting up classrooms, how she's you know, creating a schedule for the online environment. So she really took the challenges that principals are faced with and she's building an entire business around showing them how she's solving the um, problems herself and then empowering them to do the same. So that for me, like when I heard that story, I was just like, that's a perfect example of how you can start a business based on helping people solve problems that are new to them. Yeah. Um, uh, an author I really like, John Hattie. Um, you know, he's done a lot of books in education, particularly math education. Um, he and a, I think two other authors, like within the space of two months, I think turned around and brought out a book called the, the virtual 
Oh, is it the virtual education experience or something like that? And it's already mm -hmm. sold out on Amazon. Like my school district has bought a copy for every teacher there. And it's like mm -hmm. somebody moved fast and they said, okay, the problem is nobody knows how to Absolutely. handle this virtual environment. Mm -hmm. What do we do? And they moved in quick and they made a lot, I'm sure they made a lot of money <laughs> from that because they solved a problem. Right. And if you are solving a problem, that means that there's somebody out there who is waiting for you to present a solution and they just want to, to take it from you. They just want to yeah. say, please, please take my money so that I, so that you can solve my problem for me. <laughs> so, when and we, that is so. Yeah. Yes, and that is. Oh no, I was just saying that is so true, and it's not even always like some big. Like, don't think that it has to be a big problem. Like, it can be something so simple. I was on a call earlier this week. And there was someone on there that she's starting a business where she's making the Bitmoji classrooms for people. So, I mean, she took this Bitmoji craze and now she's offering customized uh, virtual Bitmoji classrooms. And that's what she's using to build a business. So even saving people time or, you know, giving them access to the things that they want, but they really don't want to do it themselves. That's another way to start a business. Yep. I watched a YouTube video yesterday because our school district is not allowing us to use Zoom. We have to use Google Meet. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know, all right, is there a way to have a virtual whiteboard in Google Meet and then also to do a virtual background? Because those are not like two options that are immediately available. Okay. So, so someone created a plugin for it. There is like the virtual learning experience, whatever it is. Um, or <laughs> I keep calling going back to that. But um, it's a virtual plugin for mm -hmm. Google Meet that allows you to put your own background in. And then I'm also seeing um, different teachers coming out and saying, well, I'll create Zoom backgrounds for you or I'll create wow. tutorials for you on how to do that. Right. Like I've seen someone who she will take your slideshows. So if you have a slideshow you use in your classroom, she will take it and she will basically, you know, if we imagine like my screen is your Zoom camera, whatever it is, she'll have your slideshow like up here in the corner. So you can talk as if like you were a news presenter and you just had like the screen up here and you can point to it and use that so you can like put, present yourself in front right. of the slides rather than having to just share your screen. Oh, and it's, wow. it's, it's so simple. Mm -hmm. all, all, all she's doing is taking your PowerPoint, exporting it as pictures, putting it in the corner and then saving it as different backgrounds. Like it's a very simple process, but people need it. And they're, right. willing, they're willing to say, you know what, if you can do that for me for $5, take my slides, give it back to me. She can do it in probably like five minutes. and. <laughs> It's a quick five bucks. And if you get a lot of people signing up for that, right. so easy. Right. Or even creating um, a video tutorial and charging $5 to show people how to do it themselves. Then you save your time um, from customizing each individual one and you're still getting, or maybe you're charging two or $3 each time somebody buys that video. But hey, it's a business. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's small pain points. So there's different words. Mm -hmm. There's pain points, there's challenges, mm -hmm. there's frustrations. Um, if you start sitting, if you start paying attention, like this is the big thing, you have to open up your eyes, open up your ears to what are people complaining about on a daily basis. Um, if you're in social media groups, you know, start looking for posts that start with help. How do I, mm -hmm. why is this happening? Like there's so many that we can, we love to complain. And it's like a gold mine for, potential business owners to find out what are people actually struggling with and how do you fix it? So if you are coming from like the business educators group, which um, I shared this, that this webinar is gonna be happening on or Finlit Fanatics or Chooseify Educators, like there is always somebody saying, how do I blank? What is a good curriculum for blank? Um, I need a resource to accomplish this. And it's, all you have to do is just look at it and be like, there's a problem. Can I solve it? Right. Can I do it quick? Can I make money from it? If so, there's a potential business. Mm -hmm. um, I sell resources on Teachers Pay Teachers. And this is an online platform where you can create digital resources that other teachers can then use. And you might be thinking like, well, why would any teacher pay for a resource? If it takes you four hours or something like that <laughs> to make this like resource and you know graphic design or Excel or PowerPoint is not your forte, like it could take you longer. The thought of paying somebody $4 just to use their resource and take it up and you know, work with it, like it's very appealing to a lot of teachers. So there's a lot of money to be made um, selling resources. And actually there's a new part to it now where school districts can um, sign up for it and they have a budget to buy resources for their teachers. So it's a great place to start if you're like, I'm a teacher, I make pretty decent resources. 
Uh, my friends tell me that they're pretty good. My colleagues ask me for them all the time. Well, maybe there's a teacher on the other side of the country who would love to, you know, take you up on that and maybe give you three or four or five or ten dollars for your resource. Right. So it doesn't have to be this like world changing problem. Um, right. If you if you want to solve that problem, by all means, go for it. But we're going to actually, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because we're going to get into like, what are the main barriers and reasons people throw up for not starting a business? But right. Um, I want to talk about what are the skills that a teacher possesses that makes them a good business owner? So um, I would say the number one skill is the fact that we are lifelong learners. We love and value learning. So when we start a business, that can be a double edged sword because we can figure stuff out. We'll, you know, Google it, watch YouTube videos. We're going to figure it out because that's what we do. But at the same time, I can't speak for anyone but myself. I can sometimes get lost down these rabbit holes and it'll be a week later and I'm still trying to figure that out. And so um, one of the I mean, being a lifelong learner is great, but at the same time, you have to take those skills that you have and say, OK, I am going to give myself like a day or two days to learn this new skill. And if I can't figure it out, then I'm going to find someone that's going to help me figure it out. So that collaborative spirit. And I don't know about you, Rob, but I know that in this space, I have collaborated with so many people that I did not know. Hey, Rob, we didn't yes. know each other before we started collaborating. And I mean, that's the one thing I love about educators that are entrepreneurs, because we're so willing to help. It's like we have this strong community. And I know when I was thinking about starting my podcast, I started reaching out to some of my favorite podcasters and not one of them turned me down. Like every single one of them was more than willing to help me figure out how to start a podcast. And so um, don't think that you have to do everything yourself. Um, you know, we love learning. So try to learn the skills, but don't get lost in those rabbit holes and lean on your community because that's one thing as educators, we collaborate with each other. We plan together. We have our team meetings. So take that same philosophy with you into business and lean on people. Don't be afraid to DM somebody or, you know, email them because I promise you I have done it and we are nice. So like everyone wants to help. So that's why it's great to be in this space. Yeah. And uh, teachers, like we can feel like islands sometimes, like you've got your own mm -hmm. four walls, you've got your classroom, you are the, you know, the emperor of that domain and that you are in charge of what goes on in there. But there are times where we do lean on those around us. We're like, okay, what are you trying? I, I can't figure out this problem. And maybe the, per the teacher beside you has an idea or you know, leaning on more experienced teachers for sure. Like that is always something that you should do. And being a business owner is no different. Find other business owners, maybe who are doing something similar to you. And I promise you, if you reach out to them and say, I'm interested in starting a business that's very similar to what you're doing, would you mind giving me like a couple minutes of your time to just tell me about what you did, what worked for you, what didn't? Most people love helping others get started. Like they're not going to see you as a threat because you're starting on a completely different mm -hmm. level to what they are and they want to share their knowledge like mm -hmm. we, we know that we love to share our knowledge mm -hmm. but i guess we're going to get now into the barriers i think a big barrier that i hear from a lot of teachers is that they feel they trained for so long to be an educator and a teacher of a very specific subject like uh, say math teacher and they can't see anything that they have learned in that career translating to being either another career like a career change or a mm -hmm. business owner but mm -hmm. It's totally not true. Like what, what is it about teachers that make them good business owners? So we know they can collaborate. We know they can communicate. Mm -hmm. What else is there? They can teach. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not trying to be funny, all jokes aside, but we have the ability um, because we're trying to be educators. We have this ability to be able to take a concept that is complicated and simplify it, break it down so that every single student in that classroom is able to understand. And that translates well into the online space. And so the thing is, you have to understand that you don't have to know everything about everything. Like that's the one one of the things that I teach educators, like 
when we're in that classroom and those four walls, we have to be the knowledge person. Like we have to know the whole curriculum. We have to be able to answer every single question that gets tossed at us. But in the business world, you just have to focus on one specific thing and become like an expert in that specific area. So you choose something that either one, you're naturally good at, like if classroom management, the kids that are off the hook in everybody else's class, they come in yours and you get them together, then that might be your space. Um, find something, one thing that you're either naturally good at or you dealt with it as a problem. That's what I did with co-teaching. I struggled with it. And then I was able to turn it around and figure it out. And now I spend my days empowering other educators to do the same. And so either find something you're naturally good at, or if there was an issue that you had that you were able to overcome, then use that and make that your one topic, but just focus on one area and move away from thinking you have to know everything about everything because you don't. Yeah. And to add on to that, you know, saying that you have to become an expert, it sounds very scary. Like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, you're thinking like, I've got a PhD and this particular topic, that's an expert. You literally just have to be better at it than everybody <laughs> around you. And you are the expert. So yeah. you, th you think about what do the people in your building come to you for help with? Is mm -hmm. it tech issues? Is it classroom management? Is it graphic design? Is it resource creation? Like, you may think like, well, I'm, I'm mediocre at these things, but in comparison to the people around you, mm -hmm. you are the expert and that's all it takes to start a business. Like yes. you, you just have to be the person that the average um, person is going to come to because you have slightly more knowledge than they do and you're able to solve a problem for them. So it comes back to that problem solving. Like you, right. don't, you don't have to be certified. You don't need a master's degree in anything like this. Like you don't need anybody's permission to solve a problem for somebody else. And I think that's a big hang up a lot of us have is that we do feel like we gotta be the industry mm -hmm. expert to be able to start a business in that area. And, and you don't. Um, right. You know, anybody can do this. You can take skills, strengths you have already, as Erica said, or you can say, you know what? This is a big problem that a lot of people have. I consider myself to have a growth mindset. I will go learn how to mm -hmm. do that particular thing and solve that problem. And I may not be the best at it, but you know what, I'm better than all you guys. So. If you want that problem solved, here's how you hire me. And I'm um, just adding to that. You are absolutely right. You only have to be one step ahead of the people that you're teaching. And what ends up happening, like when you make the decision that you're going to focus on this specific area. Now, when you do, you know, your own personal PL or you're buying books and reading them, like you're gaining more knowledge every day in that specific area. And so while you may feel in the beginning like you're only one step ahead of somebody, as you start studying and growing in that area, like you're gonna look up and you're 10 steps ahead and 20 steps ahead because they're not studying it or trying out these strategies the way that you are. So, I mean, I couldn't agree more. You don't have to be, you know, the you don't have to have a PhD. You just have to have one chapter ahead of the people that you're helping to get started. And you don't need an MBA. You do not need a master's in business, uh, business administration to start a business. And please don't get one if that's like <laughs> the only reason you're doing it. There is an infinite amount of free knowledge out in the world or just courses, certifications that you can get that are very cheap compared to going to a four year university. Yes. So definitely like look for alternate ways to learn your information. There are a ton of resources out there. And again, you only need to find somebody who's a little bit better at it than you are to show you how to get to that level. And then you can move up slowly. Yes. All right, next hang up I get is it takes money to start a business. It takes money to make money. That's the myth. And I heard something that was like, that was a line that came out of like a Roman or Greek comedy one time. And people just like start repeating it and parroting it. And it's like, well, that was never intended to be actual, like serious um, right. information. And we want to push back on that. It takes money to make money. Like I need to have like $5,000 put aside so that I can, you know, throw it all into this new business or right. I need two years worth of salary put aside so that I can, you know, quit my job and take the leap into this business. Is it true? It is not true, especially with all of the technology that we have available to us now that is free. And so, I mean, just taking your example of, 
selling digital resources or selling your resources on Teachers Pay Teachers. Like you can get a free account on there. You can create them using Google Docs, which is free. You can, you know, download it as a PDF. You can use Google Slides, which is free. Um, and so you do not have to have, like you can literally start a business for free. And what I tell people is that when you do that and you start making money, the goal is to then invest that money back into your business so that you can start growing it. So those things that cost money, I mean, even um, Rob will tell you, having an email list is important to being successful, but you can do that absolutely free. Like there are so many uh, free trials, free options, like literally every aspect of your business, you can get started for free. And as you begin to earn money from the business, you just use it to grow. Yeah. And it's that idea of a zero dollar startup that you are mm -hmm. trying to start your business first close to nothing is possible. And mm -hmm. what's what's nice about that is there's no risk. Like you can try something, you can experiment, you can see, does this work? Do people like it? And if it doesn't work, who cares? You had a learning experience and it didn't cost you like hardly anything to do it. So those are businesses that if this is your first time starting a business, I encourage you to try and find things like that. Like it is wonderful to have these big ideas that you're like, this is an awesome business idea. I think I can grow this in the future, but I need like a hundred thousand dollars to get started. Like don't ever lose that idea. Right. But it does. There doesn't have to be the one. And I guess that's the next hang up is that people like, I don't have an idea that's going to like change the world, completely replace my career income and is a brand new invention that's going to like save the planet. Um, like it's, it's something that I think a lot of us, if we don't grow up hearing about like entrepreneurship through school, uh, we don't see examples of it. We don't realize that it's not this big, scary thing that takes a very special person. Like you don't have mm -hmm. to be Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, Oprah Winfrey to like start a business. Like you can be, right. <laughs> you, you can be average Joe or Jane and, go start a business. Um, right. And I mean, I loved what you said about not having to change the world. Like I always say, change your world. If you're dealing with the problem, start off by changing your world and then take what you've done to help others change their world. So even if you're just helping one teacher, like you start with one and they start talking and telling people about how you were able to help them. And that one becomes two, like just start small, start with you, change your world, and then make it your mission to empower and help as many others change their world as you possibly can. Yeah, and the the, the next one that comes up is this idea that I'm not creative. Like I, I just don't see business ideas. Like I don't, I don't have one. And creativity is, I think I'm just preaching to the choir here. Like this, should, this is probably a room full of teachers. Like creativity is something that we are all born with. We have it. School doesn't do a great job of cultivating it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like the studies do show that around third grade, our create our self identified creativity levels go down. So if you ask kids in like kindergarten, are you creative? They're like, heck yes, I am. Look at this like stick drawing I did. Um, and then you get to like third grade and they start saying, ah, not really. And by the time they get to high school, very few kids are self identifying as creative. And what we need to think about is, well, how do I get that? that muscle going again? How do I get that part of my brain to start lighting up again? And it's practice. It's like a muscle that you are just literally going to work it out. So if you, the, if what you take away from this webinar is I'm going to now start looking for people's pain points. I'm going to start listening. I'm going to start watching. Mm -hmm. You will start seeing these problems pop up and you'll be like, how, how did I never see these before? They're everywhere. Right. People love to complain. And there's no there's no end to these ideas um, or these these problems. And then you're looking for the ones that you can solve. And there are there are infinite ideas out there. There's just so right. many. There's no monopoly on it. There isn't like we're going to run out of bus potential businesses anytime soon. The world keeps changing, which keeps changing the rules of the game, which means that there's always going to be opportunities for people to move in and set up a business. Right. And I love what you said. And I just even think about the teacher's lounge, even though, you know, depending where you are, you might not have that right now. But just listen to what people are complaining about in the copy room or in the teacher's lounge like that will give you a whole slew of problems to think about. And I mean, I am a witness to the creativity thing like I never thought that I had a creative bone in my body. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> but I make resources and products and social media images all the time. And so with practice, it just starts to come to you naturally. You learn your colors that you lean towards, like you just kind of trial and error. But that's one of the things too, that I always like to make sure that I mention is like, do not think you have to be perfect. Don't compare yourself to that mm -hmm. guru out there that has been doing this for five years. Like I was on the call um, a couple of days ago and someone said something about my branding and website. And I was like, I wish you would have put this question, um, you know, in one of the posts earlier so that I could have pulled out some of those year one <laughs> resources that I made because they look nothing like year three. Um, and so, uh, just know, do not compare yourself to that person. Start where you are. And as you continue to build and move forward, like your create your creative juices will flow and it will all come together. Like you will look up a year from now and be like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that I accomplished. Oh, for sure. And I'm sorry, guys, my video shut off for a second, but it's just resetting. And Oh, I hate webinar jam sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gave me some time to look in the questions and we have some. Oh, do it, do it, yeah. go for it. Let's take a question break. Yes, um, so Ann asks, how do you define the line between what you own and what your district owns? If you create it at work, does it belong to you? Um, do you want to take that one or do you want me to take it? You can start it, but I have a personal story to add to that. But go oh, ahead. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we'll get the story in a sec. So yes, if you are creating stuff on school time, it is often in your contract that they own what you create during school time or using school equipment, school paid for programs. Um, you have to be very careful about what you are using, like even down to storing things in your school Google Drive versus your personal one. Yeah. Um, it happens. Um, there's a teacher who worked in my district and I don't know them personally, but I hear the story that they created a textbook, like wrote like a multiple, like probably hundred page um, textbook with another person. And when they went to sell it, the school claimed it. They said, well, you know what? You were working on this during school hours. You did it on your school laptop using um, school editing software. And we're, we're taking control of this. And yeah, they lost it. Like they, they had nothing to stand on. They were, they were in fact, you know, violating their contract. So yeah, you have to be very careful. Yes, and I mean, I think you covered all of the bases. Um, definitely that what you store in your Google Drive, even what you send out on email, anything like that um, is so important. And I know for me, read your contract because I got called out very recently on a conflict of interest about the co-teaching work that I do because when I consult, that's what I do. And so then in my personal business, I was doing some co-teaching consulting on the side. And um, I had to stop that line of my business for now and just focus, which was fine because I was pretty much focusing um, on Classroom the CEO anyways, but I always felt like I had these two worlds and now I had to streamline it and make it into one because it was clearly a conflict of interest. So make sure that you read that contract. And I was just thankful that I hadn't really invested a lot of time in building that side of my business yet. Yeah. So like I authored a workbook as well. You can see it behind my shoulder here, the simple startup. And it's funny because I started as like, oh, this is a resource I want to use like myself in teaching. So it started with just like worksheets and things like that. And then I was like, you know what? I think this is a workbook. And at that point I had to say, okay, I need to switch to a different laptop. I need to use mm -hmm. my own programs and create it that way. And now that it's there, I realize, you know what? I can't use it in my own classroom because I'm not allowed to profit from a resource I've created. So I can't buy it. So I have to like donate them myself to the school, which isn't an issue anymore. But like in the beginning, I was like, oh crap, like I need 60 of these and they're like $20 yeah. each to print. So yeah, you gotta be aware of that, that there are things that you have to watch out for. Um, selling on Teachers Pay Teachers, like if your <laughs> resources are branded with like your school logo, they should not be up on Teachers Pay Teachers. Now, all you have to do is tweak your resource. Like there's very like little uh, totally original content coming out. You take something, you make an idea better. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's a new idea. So like all you have to do is just like adapt it in some way and then it's totally yours. But yeah, be careful. Um, and as Erica said, read your contract, find out from HR, like, hey, what's the story of this? I'm thinking about 
going into the side business on Teachers Pay Teachers, what should I watch out for? Mm-hmm. And if, you, if you're upfront about it ahead of time, you know, you don't have to feel like you're being sneaky about it. And you can just say, here's the line. I got to stay on that side of the line, schools on this side right. of the line, and they don't cross. Like you're not making resources during your planning period. You're not doing it. Like, right. Even though technically your lunch break, you're not on the clock. You're still not, but I wouldn't make stuff during your lunch break either. Right. All right. I think that's great advice. Um, Zondel asked, do you have the Bitmoji person's info? And if you don't, could we find it maybe afterwards and include it in our like wrap up email? Yes, I asked, um, I had sent Crystal a private message and just asked her to email me that question so that when I check my email, I can remember and I'll go inside of this other group. It was almost like what I'm doing right now with you guys. So I was in another group. So I'll go in there and post and ask them who that was. And once I get that information, I'll be sure to share it. Yeah, because these these Bitmoji classrooms are very cool and like they have a lot of potential to help teachers. So like if it's going to help you and somebody can do it in 10 minutes and it would take you 10 hours, right. it, 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 I can get that trade off. Like we don't have a huge amount of time. Now, this brings me to the characteristics about teachers that do not make a good entrepreneur and what we need to be very mindful of as we move into this space. What do we need to kind of leave behind in the classroom or what do we need to tweak to go from classroom focused to being a business or side hustle person focused? Um, And I will just share my own story. In the beginning, I brought my I have to do it all myself mindset into business. And so um, I was researching and anything I read from a guru that said you should do to be successful, I would do it. Um, or at least try to do it myself. So I spent months um, like building a WordPress website. If you've ever been in WordPress, you know that that is definitely, um, it it takes a long time. It's it's a learning experience, yeah. Yes, it is. And so, you know, trying to build my own website, trying to then, uh, you have to write a blog post every week. So now I'm writing a blog post every week. Someone asked about advertising and marketing, and we'll definitely get to that. But I have read from the guru that you had to do social media posts. And so I'm trying to post on Twitter, on Pinterest, on Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. And I ended up burnt out, overwhelmed, like closed my laptop down for like three or four months. Like I just I'm done. And then um, I got myself back together. And so that mindset that you have to do everything yourself, like just like it leads to burnout in the classroom, it leads to burnout in your online business. And so now I teach the power of one. You start with one. You don't worry about trying to have a website in the beginning because you use a marketplace like Teachers Pay Teachers or you don't try to create a business account on every single social media platform. You choose your favorite one and you start building your community there. And as you bring in more money, then that leaves you with time or you can get people to help you out and you can build up those other areas. So just choose and focus on one area and one aspect of your business and build that out. Yeah, and I definitely want to come back to that because I want to talk about this idea of a minimal minimum viable product. But mm-hmm. the other one that I was thinking, you know, teachers, we are notorious for spending our own money in our own classes, and we are extremely generous with our time. We are we are in a service industry, and a lot of us are called to this job because we yeah. want to be of service to others. And I like I don't always count myself in that group. I'm like, you know what? I didn't feel like there was this higher calling that came when I was deciding to be a teacher. I like I made it for the worst decision ever. I was like, you know, I like June, July, August. That sounds great. Um, <laughs> I don't want to be sitting at a desk all day. Like those were the reasons I went into teaching and it was like the worst reasons to go into teaching. Um, I trained to be a phys ed math teacher and realized very quickly that the physical education classroom or physical education gym is just like a zoo and it's so hard. And I was like, nope, classroom for me. And then I realized, oh, I like math. I can, I'm good at this. And I'm, I'm good at it. That's why I like doing it. But it's not this calling to you know selflessly give myself to the profession Mm -hmm. i see from some of my colleagues and those can be the ones that do end up very burnt out by the end of their careers like they give everything to teaching and Mm -hmm. they don't get a huge amount back sometimes and you know being careful about that it's like kind of like you said with your business like you can't put everything into this and just to kind of expect it to blossom to be very smart and very strategic about how you Mm -hmm. do it 
But the other side of it is you are now going to be in a side hustle or a business. Like you have the right to charge what you are worth. And it's a very hard thing to do for a teacher to charge what you are worth and what your time is worth. And you have to figure out what that is because up until now you've just been giving your time or you're just basing it off whatever that salary is that comes with how much experience you have as opposed to how skilled you are. So mm -hmm. you get to really determine now what is your time worth and what are your skills worth? And you have to make sure you charge that. It's, I remember the first time I tried to charge a kid for tutoring. It was so hard. Um, like the parent asked, well, okay, what's your rates? And like you, you feel almost like you're cheating the teaching profession by like saying, I'm going to charge a kid for helping them with their math. Mm -hmm. And that was something I had to very much overcome and say, you know what? I'm out, I'm off the clock here. Like in terms of my teaching job, like my time is worth something and I'm going to help this kid. I'm, they're going to do way better math as a result of it. So there is a price that you can put on that. And that was mm -hmm. something that was very important for me. Yes, I agree. I really struggled with this area. Um, yeah, struggled with it because I wanted to, I have a heart to serve like so many educators and I wanted to help as many people as possible. And so I would just give, 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 give. And what I had to come to recognize for myself, and I mean, everyone has to make a personal decision as to what you're willing to give for free and then what you are going to charge for. And for me personally, I came to the decision and it has worked well for me that I will teach you or tell you how, tell you what to do for free. If you want to start a business, hey, I have a whole podcast episode, three steps to start a business absolutely free. I will tell you what to do for free. But if you need me to teach you how to do it, if you want me to take you through the steps, teach you which tools to use, give you those tutorials on how to use those tools, that's when I charge. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that was where I had to go to say, OK, I'll tell you what to do for free because I want to empower you. I want to give you that knowledge that you need. But if you want to work with me to learn how to do it or to get that roadmap so that you could do it strategically, then that's what I'm going to charge you for. Yeah. And it, it is a hard one. And I see a couple of people like Stephanie, you're asking like, well, what, how do you determine the going rates? Like this is when you, you use that strength as a teacher and you find that community and you say, who else out there is tutoring? Mm -hmm. What are you charging? And it varies by it varies by city pretty much. Like I know mm -hmm. I'm in Maryland. So Frederick, Maryland, I could command one rate. If I went 40 minutes down the road towards DC, my rate would nearly double um, just because that would be what the going rate would be around the DC area. So it's going to, it's going to be very much dependent on your local area, but I would, I would ask around like, Hey, what are your competitors charging? And mm -hmm. there are strategies you can put in place, like either place yourself in the middle because you're going to be saying, okay, well, that's a fair price. You go low to try and build a customer base and then build it up. Or you go high and you say, you know what? I'm freaking amazing. And if you want me to be your tutor, I, I command top money because I'm amazing at what I do. And you get to decide that. And it, it is a hard one. I, I feel for you with that. Um, just talking about, I want to do Q and A for like the last 10 minutes. So I know your questions okay. have been piling up in the chat box here, guys. So keep those coming in. But the last one I want to talk about is this idea of the MVP, the minimum viable product. Mm -hmm. And this is the, it's the bare bones version of your business. And we've hinted about this a couple of times. You're going to look for your idea, you know, the problem you want to solve. And then you think about what is the simplest way to solve this problem? Like mm -hmm. the one that doesn't involve a brand new website, um, sending something out to a manufacturing facility in China <laughs> to get made. Like that's not going to be the simplest way to get started. Like look for simple. What is free, what's easy to do, what's quick, and then get that out there. And then you start getting feedback from your customers. You start saying, mm -hmm. okay, I've made this very basic thing. You understand it's very basic. It's going to be cheap because of that. What would make it better? And you then start, you start building, like you kind of add little bits and pieces to your product. You make it better and better, better. And if it gets more expensive as you go, and then you get to start charging more, you know, top mm -hmm. dollar for it. And you're just, you're growing your business organically as you go. You're using the profits mm -hmm. to build that next part. Mm -hmm. I know a guy who spent, or you may be familiar with Pat Flynn. Oh, yes. So Pat Flynn, Smart Passive Income Podcast. Awesome podcast, by the way, guys. If yes, you I are do. thinking about starting a business, like he is just a wealth of information. Um, he has a story about, you know, he got really excited about building a plugin for WordPress, dropped $15,000 into it. And when he finally like unveiled it, people were like, meh, it was okay. But there's like, there's these other ones that will do the exact same thing. Like didn't 
think, okay, what's the simplest way to do this, to fix this problem? Like when too big, too fast and waste a lot of money doing it. Mm -hmm. So the market research is going to be super important. Getting feedback, super important. So I think as you can tell, there's just like a ton of stuff we could talk about tonight. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll run out of time pretty quick, but let's hit some questions. What's standing out to you in the chat box? So I have wrote down a few things. Um, we have a couple of questions. So I definitely want to make sure because we promised at the beginning we would talk about passive income and drop shipping. Mm -hmm. um, someone asked, do you need a master's degree? I can quickly say no, no. you don't at all. Um, and so I think we got that one. And then the other one was about marketing and advertising. We have a few questions out there about how, when, when you make these products, how do you get the word out? How do you market and advertise and collect money? Okay. So let's start with drop shipping. Um, drop shipping, if you're not familiar with the term is basically where you have a product of some sort. So a very easy example, something like a t-shirt, like you want to do a custom design t-shirt, um, say like you want to do one for math teachers, like dorky math t-shirts. Um, it's a really hot market for some reason. <laughs> we love our really dorky t-shirts. Um, and you don't want to design them, take them to a printer, have like a thousand of them. Cause that's usually like the minimum order sitting around your house. And then you have to try and like sell them. Instead, what you do is you create it. It sits on an online platform and then somebody says, Oh, click to buy. Yes and the manufacturing facility produces one of those units in response and sends it directly to the customer. So that is drop shipping or print on demand is another way of th thinking about it. There are lots of different programs out there. So depending on your product, um, you can do things like that. Um, fulfillment by Amazon is kind of like that. You make a product, you make like a thousand of them, you send them to Amazon, they store them in their warehouse and then people buy through Amazon. It's not quite the same, so you do have to buy a bunch upfront. Um, print on demand for books is another thing you can do. So you write a book, you send it to a printer and they do print on demand. So they take a much higher cut because of it. But every time someone buys your book, they print one and then they send it out and you get a small skim off the top. Same thing with the t-shirts, the t-shirt company, like if you're selling a $15 t-shirt, the company's probably taking 10 of that. Then there's probably like $2 in shipping. So you're getting maybe $3 off every $15 t-shirt, but you don't have to, you don't have to carry any stock. Right. Um, so I have a t-shirt. I had a t-shirt line for math teachers. So that's personal experience there on Redbubble, which is just a site where you upload your artwork. You can throw it on mugs, t-shirts, bags, like every kind of accessory you can think of. And if someone buys it, Redbubble makes it, they send it to them and they just send you an alert saying, Hey, by the way, you just made 20 cents. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that, that's what the MVP looks like. And then if you're like, Oh, you know what? This one product has sold like a hundred people like this one that might be one that you say okay i'm going to buy a thousand of those and i will either do fulfillment by amazon so i'll let them handle the shipping or i'll just do it myself and you grow that way so i didn't have any risk other than the time i put into making a graphic in this particular business and i don't really pay attention to it anymore but even last month i still got like a two euro and 44 cents sale like someone in europe bought it this dorky math t-shirt and I'm like, Oh sweet. You know, that's $2 right. that I didn't have yesterday. I'll take that. Right. All right. Yes. And so I think even just um, piggybacking off of that, waking up to the alert that you just earned money, right? That takes us to passive yes. income, um, which is one of my favorite topics because when you, um, open your eyes to the opportunities of affiliate marketing, which is my main source of passive income, um, you will be blown away. Like I didn't realize Amazon target, like those are my two prime examples of um, companies that have affiliate programs. And what that means is that if you share a product, if someone says, Hey, where did you get that dress from on the first day of school? And you're like, Oh, target. And so if you were a part of their affiliate program and you shared the link, they bought the dress, you get a percentage of the sale. Or if you're talking about a great book that you have read this summer and you're an Amazon affiliate, you share the link to the book. Every time someone buys the book, you get a percentage of the sale. And so, I mean, you literally wake up and it's like you make two dollars, but those two dollars. <laughs> keep adding up and over time it's like at the end of the month you've just made a few hundred dollars from affiliate marketing and so i love um creating passive income streams 
Yeah. So like, for example, like that um, John Hattie book that I mentioned earlier, right. that, um, if I had been, I, I, I do have a, a book yeah. affiliate programs, um, bookshop.com, by the way, is one I really recommend if you want to recommend books. Okay. So bookshop.com, it's better rates than Amazon. So Amazon will give you a small percentage of sale. Bookshop.com gives you a better one and they source their books from local bookstores. So oh, local bookstores okay. get supported by it too. So I, that's a personal plug for that. Um, a lot of authors I know are like, please use bookshop.com. It like yeah. supports the local bookstores. Um, so yeah, like you just, you're recommending something or um, there's a product you use. And you, like you said, like, I'm just gonna put this out there. I'm gonna write a blog post about how amazing this product is. And just mm -hmm. in that, I'm going to say, well, if you're interested in buying it, if you click my link, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but I mm -hmm. get a small percentage of the sale. Right. So companies are saying, hey, you're you're doing free advertising for us. Sure, we'll mm -hmm. give you a small cut of the sale. Um, exactly. And Teachers Pay Teachers is another example of it becomes passive income. So a lot of these things are not just like you turn a switch someday and like money's just flowing in. Like you have to put work in, you front load the work. Um, mm -hmm. So in, in Teachers Pay Teachers, you create a resource, you post it. And as after you post it, every time someone buys it, you know, you didn't have to do any extra work really for that right. sale. Um, and that sort of brings us to advertising. You know, if you want to start thinking about like, how do I advertise something like a Teachers Pay Teacher store? The free way to do it is social media. Mm -hmm. Like social media is free for the most part. Like, yes, mm -hmm. there are things in place like Facebook has to like kind of limit the amount you can try and be salesy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, being able to share posts, ask friends to share things, um, get people to write testimonials for you, create mm -hmm. groups. Um, if you're bringing value to people, they will listen when you actually have something to sell. Yes. And also, I mean, just thinking about what you said earlier, when you're looking at those posts that say, hey, I need help with or, you know, how do you do? And if it's a if you've created something that helps with that or teaches them exactly how to do it, I mean, always answer the question. Don't just say, hey, go buy this, but answer the question. And then at the end of the question, say, and by the way, like I have this resource that shows you step by step how to do that. And so definitely even using those types of helping and empowering people post to, I mean, free promote your business. And it's not just to that person, but someone else that's struggling with it, that saw the question and started reading the comments that could lead them to your store or site as well. Yeah. And your customers are going to be, if you do it right, your customers are going to be your biggest source of advertising. Mm -hmm. So like the best advice I ever got was the focus on your first 100 customers and yes. you make them feel like absolute superstars. Like they are mm -hmm. the most special person in the world because you gave them the best product, the best customer service. You followed up, you asked them, you know, is there anything else I can do to help you? Mm -hmm. And in return, you don't even ask for it. They start recommending you to friends, to right. family, to people they know. Someone else posed the question, hey, I'm looking for a resource on um, teaching kids personal finance. And someone who I've helped might jump on that and be like, oh, hey, you should check out Rob's resources. Right. He's got tons of them on Teachers Pay Teachers about personal finance. Right. And there was nothing on my end that I had to do to, you know, to earn that um, right. after you know, doing a great job with the first customer. So it's a slow growth game. It's exponential growth. Right. But you can certainly grow without having to spend hundreds of dollars on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram advertising, Google ads, like you can do that eventually, you know, by all means, like when you get you know, more money rolling in, you want to take mm -hmm. it to the next level, you can start looking at paid advertising, but free advertising will get you a lot of the way. Right. And I mean, we could really talk about this topic all night. Cause <laughs> another thing I thought about too, is that if you, I know sometimes you're unsure when you create a product, like, is this really what teachers need? You know, did I get at everything? And so, you can, you know, invite people to try the product that for free or a very discounted price from what you're planning to sell it from. I mean, it's called beta testing, but at the end, just say in exchange for me, you know, letting you try this out for free or for a discounted price, I would like your feedback and, you know, including a testimonial. And that's another way to get that proof that your product works or that your strategy works before you actually take it to market for everyone else. Okay, so guys, we are at the top of the hour and there are still questions rolling in. I definitely <laughs> wanna like acknowledge that those are there. So like, Andrew, I see your questions, you know, how do you get the word out to customers? Hopefully you know, we hit that a little bit. Mm -hmm. How do you collect money? Like there are a lot, It's it could be its own webinar episode <laughs> on like different strategies for, you know, doing cash, digital payments, setting up right. websites. Like there is a lot to that. And do you have to have an LLC? Short answer, no. 
Um, it depends on your product, depends on what you're doing. If you mm -hmm. are you know, providing a service where there's the potential for like getting sued or someone like getting hurt from anything you're producing, I would consider an LLC. It protects your personal wealth mm -hmm. from getting sued by, you know, a customer. Um, you know, doing something like resources on TPT, like start without an LLC, like just yeah. start small, get like, that's your MVP. You don't need an LLC to do it. And then when you get a bit bigger and Uh oh, can you all still hear me? Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I don't know what happened there. Yes, we're back. Hi. <laughs> um, I don't know where in my rant I got thrown off there, but <laughs> can you? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. I th okay. I think, yeah, I got thrown out for a second. Um, but yeah, start start small is kind of what we're saying, Andrew. Um, mm -hmm. Don't don't feel like you have to jump straight into having an LLC. Same thing with the master's degree. You don't need it start small like you don't you don't need all these qualifications and big fancy tools to make a business work and actually make a lot of money from it. like you can make a lot of money from a very simple business mm -hmm. and that's my specialty i you know teach kids i teach adults how to start simple businesses learn the ropes of how a business works and then help them graduate to erica's level where like you know you get to have your own podcast and you'll be a big shot <laughs> no not at all but thank you <laughs> all right so we have, if you like, if you are interested in learning more, like there is so much we could talk about. Um, Erica has this very interesting opportunity, a very exciting opportunity, and it's also a business. So I want you to really tell us about this summit that you organize, because this is the um, business of events and event organization. Like what is the Entrepreneur Success Summit? Yes, so I am super excited um, about Rob being a presenter, but I've also brought together 20 other educators who are still working, so, you know, they're working and they're side hustling, many of them. And we have all come together to throw a five day virtual conference where we are teaching you everything from startup and marketing to building these income streams that we were talking about. So like how to create an online course, how to create digital resources, publishing, podcasting, like we're covering all of these different income streams over those five days and they are phenomenal. I get to see the presentations in advance and I am blown away. I mean, this idea is everything from even starting a book club and using that to create that passive income that we talked about. And for those of you that are ready to get started, you're sitting here like I am ready to start my business now, then we're already active inside of the Facebook group. We have been doing challenges for the last two weeks. We just completed an affiliate marketing challenge that teaches you how to create that passive income stream that we're talking about. And that's for those people that invest in the Success Moves Pass. And so if you're interested, if you were listening tonight and you were like, yes, I want to do this, I want to learn how to create a passive income system, then we definitely invite you to join us, not only for the conference that starts August 30th, but you can join our private Facebook group and get started now. We are having a ball. Yeah, and I will say like, this is something that is, it's a paid summit, it's virtual, mm -hmm. but you know, we talked about a minimum viable product. We talked about starting cheap. Like why should somebody pay for information like this? So I think there's huge value in it. So it's, this is not like a, you should not go. In fact, I'm presenting at this, like I believe in it a lot. Yes. Why is it important in this case that like this might be something you might consider actually paying for? Yes. Yeah, so when I told you all, I shared my story about how I spent months trying to teach myself how to build a business, how to start a website. And I when I envisioned this conference, I said, what can I do? What can I bring together so that people will be able to learn these skills without having to invest all of that time? And that's literally what happens like these presentations teach you 
how to build every aspect of your business. So rather than spending days and weeks on Google trying to figure it out yourself, you can join us and get the information. I have partnered even with like Thinkific, ConvertKit. I mean, they are coming and giving us trainings on their platforms. And so we're really trying to make sure that we are equipping you to be successful in your online business. And we want to expose you to understand that there are so many different ways that you can grow. And so you don't have to feel stuck in, I have to be a teacher. I have to do an online course because there's all of these other income streams that you can grow and you will learn how to do them in that five day summit and you will have access to the replay. So if you can't show up live or if you can't, you know, that's a busy week for you. Don't worry about it because you have access to the replays inside of the portal. So you will still have the information, even if it's December, when you're ready to like sit down and really start your business, you will get your hands on all of that information. Yeah. And I liken it guys to um, like buying a book. So like Pat Flynn is a big example for me. Like he has a podcast. His podcast probably has the entire contents mm -hmm. of his book, um, you know, spread out there somewhere. But what I'm paying for is the book that basically condenses everything he has learned about starting a business into like mm -hmm. 200 pages. You're going to have 20 right. presenters here who have a variety of products. They have books, they have courses, they have um, blogs, different sorts of things. And you'll get that information condensed and like basically get a crash course in starting a business in one spot. And it's for about the price of five books. Right. Like, I think it's very well priced. I think you actually are underpricing it, to be honest. <laughs> I want to make sure it's accessible, accessible that's, that's, to everyone. That, that's why I like it. That's part of the mission. Um, yes. So I'm going to pop up the link for that, guys. Um, if you are interested, please, you know, click through, take a read, see what you think of it. Um, it's not like you have to buy. If you click on the link, it will just show you more information. Mm -hmm. And if you have questions, you, know, you can always email myself or Erica. Um, I will be sending a follow up email to this um, webinar as a, like the replay, plus um, some of the resources we talked about. Um, Stephanie, you asked for the link to the Facebook group. I'll make sure that I get that from Erica and put that in the email too. Yeah. And yeah, we will make sure that we are answering your questions. Like we are both, I think, very responsive as well to just general questions. So please feel yeah. free to reach out and we'll answer as best we can. Like I'm not an expert in everything. Um, I'm like the beginner. I'm like your, I'm like your starting step, like the baby step to get to the big business. So no, I, I, and I, I'm I can, not an expert in everything either. That's why I've brought together these 20 experts in different areas so that <laughs> you can get that information that you need. <laughs> All right. So um, Erica has been very generous. She said that anyone who came on the webinar tonight would get $20 off the price of the, um, you know, the general normal uh, MSRP of the, um, um, oh gosh, the summit. I keep calling it a webinar. It's not a webinar. It's a lot of webinars. Um, so yeah, uh, there's a promo code. Chooseify um, is going to be the promo code to get you twenty dollars off the uh, registration for it. And you know, thank you so much if you are supporting Erica and myself in you know this summit. It's a very exciting thing for me to be like alongside these really superstar um, teacherpreneur people. And if you're also looking for more content, I highly recommend you check out Erica's podcast. So that's the Classroom to CEO podcast. When do you release episodes? How often? Um, right now I'm doing once a week on Monday. When the conference starts, I'll be doing several throughout that week, just kind of highlighting what's going on behind the scenes. And so, um, but yes, it's typically every Monday I release a new episode. And I would love if you all join, when you get inside the Facebook group, just shout it out and let me know that you were on here tonight so that I can make sure that I say hello. And I am so excited and I hope to see you and I can't wait. Yeah, I'm, I think it's gonna be very fun. The replays, the um, there's like social media groups. There's like basically like virtual mixers where you get to talk to the presenters. So I, I'm looking forward and like, you know, talking to some of the people that I'm a big fan of that I haven't gotten to speak to in person. Like this is like my inside route. <laughs> It's like how often do you get like the chance to just talk to the people who are you know that three four steps ahead of you and say like hey how did you do that right tell me right. tell me yes <laughs> all right um erica thank you so much i know we've gone a little bit over our time so i really appreciate you hanging out with me and the rest of us to talk about businesses and side hustles well yes thank you for having me and i'm definitely gonna have to bring you on the show i start thank recording you. again at the end of september so i'm bringing you on so you could tell us because i've learned so much tonight so thank you guys all right um erica actually i think because i got kicked out you were in charge of the webinar so at the very uh -oh. top of your screen there should be a way to hang it up 
Uh, everyone else out there, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Would love to you know, see you in the Facebook group. So the Chooseify Educators group, Finla Fanatics, Business Educators. Um, what's the name of your Facebook group again? Um, I don't have the Facebook group for the summit. You oh, find out after yeah. you get that ticket, it's a private Facebook group. Yes. So in that email, you find out. <laughs> that's the VIP club. Yes. Is, there a, is there a Facebook group for like Classroom CEO podcast or anything like that? No, not right now. There is not. So you mm -hmm. can find me on social media. I'm at Erica Terry CEO each, everywhere. Um, Instagram, Facebook, mainly. Um, I'm on Twitter too, but I'll be honest, I don't really tweet that much. But yeah. yes, I would love to engage with you guys. Yeah. And you'll find me, um, the simple startup is pretty much what I will you know, use for most social media platforms. Or you can find me at, as Rob Phelan on Facebook. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a great night. Erica, are you able to hang us up? I, I, I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> I think I might just have to refresh and hand yes, it back do, to you. Do, do okay. That.